So the recursion variants include tail recursion, binary recursion, and multiple recursion. So I will explain those three. What are the difference between those three? The tail recursion, binary recursion, and multiple recursion. Let's see one by one. So the tail recursion, it is similar to the linear recursive methods. So we call this is the tail recursion because uh, we can uh, convert this one into just a simple loop. If you still remember the array reversal methods, when we have an array, we want to exchange. So we want to reverse. So that kind of example is the Example of the tail recursion. So such method can be easily converted to non-recursive methods. What is non-recursive methods? If you still remember about what the binary search. If you still remember about this binary search, the problems in binary search you can solve with the loop function or you can solve it also with the recursion. So this, you'll see, this is also one example about the tail recursion. In the case that you can solve with the non-recursive method, some problems can save on some resources. It means the resources can be more efficient. If you use with the uh, recursive methods, it may in increase the complexity. So the idea of the tail recursion is we can use simple loop to run the algorithm. Binary recursion. You know what does the meaning what what is the meaning by binary? Binary. Binary. It is always have two values, zero one or true false. So the binary recursion means we have two recursive calls. For example, this one. If I want to do the binary sum, the binary sum contains the array A, and then I have the I and I have N. I means the index, where is the location of a particular element, and then N is the number of the data. So let's see this one. I have the index from zero until eight. Okay. I want to do the summation. If I want to do the summation, yeah, you can do just from the index zero and then index one and then index two and then index three and so on until index eight. That's the very easy. Uh, calculation. But if I want to do with the uh, binary sum, if I want to do with the binary sum, means I want to split. Okay? I want to split the first section, which is the element from 0, 1, 2, 3. And then I want to also split with the element five, six, seven, eight. So we do the summation on the left and we do the summation on the right section. Okay. 
we have the A, which is the array from I. Let's say if I have the zero for I and an eight for the N, then I can do the next, which is the A zero and then N divided by two. N is eight divided by two, then it is four. So we will go from the index zero, one, two, three, and four plus the binary sum of A, which is from the I plus N divided by two. So I, I is zero, zero plus four. Okay, and then until N divided by two, four. So we will move from the index four and then plus one, two, three, four. Like that one. And it will be for the right section. And we will do again to split into the binary again. We will split into the binary again until the last element. And after we reach the last element, we will check back because the recursion is to recur to the upper side. So this is an example of the binary recursion method. If I have one uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like this, and then I can split. Okay. The first section is on the left, and the other section is on the right. And then again, I split. The other first section is on the left, and then the other section is on the right. Okay. The first is on the left, and then the other is on the right. And for the right section, we have to split this one on the left, and then this one is on the right. And then if we go to the next, again, we will do the splitting on the left and on the right. Left and on the right. And after we get the, the lowest value or the lowest element, then we will return back. So this means two plus four, because it is already the single element. And this is five plus seven, so it is 12. So we after we get this one is six, after we get this one 12, then we also add this become 18. This is the summation using the binary recursion. This is only one example. Of course, you can use with many other kind of problems. Let's say the Fibonacci. Okay, you know Fibonacci. Yeah, if we have a number like zero, Okay, if I have number zero one, then the next number will be zero plus one, and then the next number will be one plus one, and then the next number will be one plus two, and the next number will be two plus three, the next number will be three plus five, and so on. So the number here will be the formula from i minus one plus the index minus two. So I can have the formula like this one. The index i will be the addition of index minus one and i index minus two. And if we want to use the recursive algorithm, Let's suppose we use this binary Fibonacci. If the k equals to one, so it means I want to print how many numbers of the Fibonacci. 
If the K equals to one, then just return the K. So just return one. If not, then I can do the summation binary fifth K minus one and then plus binary fifth K minus two. Now, is it true? Okay, if you check this one, actually, this is not good algorithm. Okay, even though the idea is uh, you have two kind of factors, or you, you have two kind of values, which is the F i minus one plus f i minus two but even though you have this one maybe you can see this is the first binary and then this is the second binary but it's not that simple to use recursive when you do with the first and n zero equals to one there will be no issue when you have the n1 equals to 1, there will be no issue. But when the number increase, okay, when the number increase, so it will be an issue. So when the number like in the n2, now it becomes n2 plus uh, n2 is We have n2 equals to n1 plus n0 plus 1. So it becomes 3. So there are three times when we want to execute when the n equals to 2. But when the n equals to 3, we need to execute n2 and we need to execute the n1. And there's uh, another one for the k equals to 1. So it means we will run like 5 times of operation. If we have n equals to four, so we will run about like nine or time of operation. If we have five theta, yeah, it is about 15 times of operation. So you can imagine that this number, this number, increase a lot okay when you have the data as eight you will run like 67 operation then it is somehow like double for every time okay? so three and then go to five and then five go to nine nine go to 15 you're almost double and I can say something about exponential. So the K, if given the K, okay, so given the number of uh, Fibonacci numbers that you want to print, so the big O will be somehow two power of K divided by two. So this is exponential. So in some cases, the binary recursive will not work. So using uh, binary recursion does not guarantee to get a better function. This is a better Fibonacci algorithm. You can just use the linear. Okay. The linear recursion, something like this one. Uh, we have the k. K is the number of uh, the the um, how many numbers that you want to print or how many numbers that you want to show of the Fibonacci. And then I have the i comma j. It has the function linear Fibonacci k minus one. So every time I go to the next minus one, I will put the i ng so it means the two numbers before and i will 
written i plus j comma i. So there will be always two numbers. Always two numbers. So this k will make only k minus one recursive calls. So k is the number of the data. Okay, is the number of the uh, numbers that you want to print. If you analyze with the uh, big O notation, then it will be O n. Okay, k is the number of the data, so it means O k. Okay, if k equals to the number, then it will be O n. Yeah, you can check if you want to uh, analyze this one. Uh, for example, you can go to this. Okay, this is uh, the web that I showed to you before. You can see line by line execution. So let's suppose I have this code. Okay. And then you can put here. And then you can visualize it. So this is the uh, Fibonacci function. If n equals to one, then returns zero comma one. So there are two values that we want to return. Else, so I will have a comma b. There are two values, and then I will do the Fibonacci n minus one. So go to the previous number. I have n equals to six, so I would like to print six numbers. So we'll check n my equals to one. No, then I will have a comma b, which is pip n minus one, and then we will go to the uh, function pip again with n equals to five, and then we will go n equals to four, and then go n equals to three. And go n equals to two, and then go n equals to one. Okay, now n equals to one. So the value will be written zero and one. Next, we will do the a plus b because we have zero and one. Then we will add zero plus one, and then we will get the a. A means the Previous value, which is the zero. So we have one. This is the result of zero plus one, and then one as the value of the variable a. And then we will go next. One and one, and then we go next. Two and one, and then we will go next. Three and two, we will go next. Five and three, and yeah, finish. Okay. So the result will be zero, zero, uh, zero, one, one, two, three, five. Okay, so this is all about the recursion. Okay. We learn about the basic definition. We learn about the linear recursion, and we learn about some recursion variants. In this case, I didn't explain about the multiple. Uh, recursion and maybe you will have questions what is the difference between recursion and iteration so the recursion is more elegant okay. yeah in some uh, analysis they call it uh, it is easy to understand the code but anyhow, uh, iteration is also not that difficult to understand. The performance, some problems can solve efficiently using recursion and others not. So sometimes the iteration might be better than the recursion. About the debug ability, the debug ability means whether you can uh, check the code one by one. Okay. So some problems in recursion are difficult to debug when it occurs errors. So the iteration might be still good, but in some cases you still need to do it with the recursion. Okay. 
Okay, I think that's all about the recursion. Any comments, questions?